Hi viewers, welcome to my class on mechanics of materials. In today's class, I will discuss stresses induced in composite bars. What is a composite bar? It is a combination of two materials which are rigidly bonded. Let us consider the materials which are bonded parallelly and their lengths are equal. So both the materials are joined together. They are parallelly connected composite bar can be even serially connected that is one material at the end of another material is connected that is also a composite bar so let us consider a case where both are parallelly connected and their lengths are equal this kind of composite materials exist in real life for example a concrete pillar so it consists of two different materials like uh, concrete and uh, uh, steel bar. Steel rods are inserted inside the concrete uh, pillar. So concrete and steel can be considered as two different materials which are rigidly bonded and uh, they are uh, resisting the uh, compressive load exerted on the pillar. So that is uh, an example for a composite uh, structure. So such uh, situations arise in engineering applications where you need to find out the stress induced in the materials. So when load is applied. So let us consider a composite bar consisting of two different materials 1 and 2 joined parallelly and uh, uh, subjected to an axial load P. Axial load may be tensile or compressive. So when the load is uh, applied at the ends like uh, as shown in the figure both the materials has to resist the load so but uh, how much load is taken by material one and how much is shared by two uh, that we need to find out and corresponding stress induced in those materials has to be found so as the load is applied since they are rigidly connected there is no separate uh, deformations permitted both the materials has to elongate to the same extent so that is one of the condition imposed because they are rigidly bonded and no individual deformations are permitted when load is applied and also the load has to be uh, shared by both the materials if a total load P is applied so if a material one shares a part of the load P1, the remaining part of the load has to be shared by the material 2. So one, one of the condition is P is equal to P1 plus P2. The total sh load is shared by both the materials. So this is one condition and another condition is the deformation in both the materials are equal. So that is delta L1 is equal to delta L2. So here I have shown that uh, three dimensional view of a composite bar. There are two materials, one and two, and the load is acting, and uh, they are uh, rigidly joined, so that both will elongate in this case by the same amount, and the load which is applied will be shared by both the materials. Now uh, we have one of the condition I mentioned: the total load is shared by both the materials that means P is equal to P1 plus P2. So suppose P1 is the load resisted by material 1. You can say that that material is subjected to a stress sigma 1. Okay. So sigma 1 is the stress induced. A load up acting in that material, axial load acting in that material divided by area of cross section of that material give the stress induced in that material or in turn you can write the load is stress induced multiplied by area of cross section of that material so p1 is equal to sigma 1 a1 the load coming into that material is equal to the load share per unit area of that material into area sigma 1 is the load taken per unit area of that uh, uh, material multiply by area will uh, give the total load shared by that material. So sigma 1 a1 is equal to p1 
and sigma 2 a2 is equal to p2. So you can write the equation p is equal to sigma 1 a1 plus sigma 2 a2. So this will give one of the equation of a composite bar. Second condition which I mentioned is both will deform equally. In this case both will elongate equally. So both the bars one, the one if it elongates by uh, delta L1 and uh, uh, second bar also has to elongate by the same amount uh, delta L1. So if I denote the change in length in bar 1 as delta L1 and change in length in the bar 2 as delta L2, both should be equal or delta L1 should be equal to delta L2. Now what causes the bar to stretch the load acting in that bar? The load acting in that material 1 is causing the stretching delta L1. Now based on the load you can find out the deformation produced. So this axial load which is coming in that material is producing the stretching of that material. So based on that you can write the deformation as P1 L1 divided by A1 E1. Since they are having uniform cross section throughout that uh, length you can use the PL by A equation for deformation and also delta L2 is E2 L2 divided by A2 E2. Now P1 by A1 is a load in that first material divided by area of cross section that is a load acting per unit area load resisted per unit area of first material. So you can write it as sigma 1 sigma 1 L1 divided by E1 and right hand side you can write P2 by A2 you can replace by sigma 2 stress in that material. So you get uh, sigma 1 L1 and divided by E1 is equal to sigma 2 L2 divided by E2. Since in this case lengths are equal uh, that is only when the lengths of the composite bar C are equal otherwise you can keep that L1 and L2 if the lengths are equal sigma 1 by E1 is equal to sigma 2 by E2. So this gives another equation for a composite bar. So you are getting the equation P is total load is sigma 1 A1 plus sigma 2 A2 and you are getting another equation sigma 1 by E1 is equal to sigma 2 by E2. So we get stress in the material 1 is E1 by E2 into stress in the material 2. E1 and E2 are the Young's modulus of material 1 and 2. So this ratio E1 by E2 is known as modular ratio. So which is the ratio of Young's modulus of two different materials. So these equations can be used to solve the stresses in the composite bar when the lengths are equal. So P is equal to the total load uh, taken by the composite bar is equal to sigma 1 a1 plus sigma 2 a2 and stress in the bar 1 is equal to e1 by e2 into sigma 2. So to find out the stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 you should know the total load area of cross sections of the, uh, both the materials and the Young's modulus of both the materials. If you know that you can solve for the stresses induced in both the materials and stresses means the load shared by the materials per unit area of cross section. Now let us work out a numerical example. A composite bar consists of a mild steel strip 50 mm wide and 20 mm thick and a copper strip having same width and 15 mm thick. The materials are rigidly bonded together so as to form a composite bar. Find the stresses induced in both the materials when the bar is subjected to an axial tensile load of 80 kN. The modulus of elasticity of steel and copper are 200 gigapascal and 100 gigapascal respectively. So we have a composite uh, bar which consists of a mild steel strip and copper strip. So mild steel strip is 50 mm wide and 20 mm thick and the copper strip is same width 50 mm width and 15 mm thick and they are rigidly bonded to form a composite bar. Now you are applying an 80 kN tensile load and you need to find out the stresses induced in both the materials. 
so i just uh, noted the data the load is 80 kilo newton that means 80000 newton so it is the composite bar mild steel 50 mm width and 20 mm thick copper same width and 15 mm thick subjected to an axial pull and the load is 80 kilo newton or 80000 newton now area of cross section of the steel strip is 15 into 20 or 1000 mm square this area cross section area or resisting area uh, of mild steel is 15 to 20 thousand mm square area of cross section of copper strip is 15 to 15 so that is 750 mm square so this cross section area is which is resisting that load and used in that material is 750 mm square material property the Young's modulus of steel is 200 gigapascal so 200 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square and for copper it is 100 gigapascal or 100 into 10 raised to 3 newton per mm square so these are the given data now we have two equations for a composite bar so i'll use the equation sigma s is equal to es by ec into sigma c instead of 1 and 2 i substituted s and c sigma 1 is equal to e1 by e2 into sigma 2 instead of 1 i substituted s okay so we have sigma s is equal to es by ec into sigma c so now es is 200 into 10 raised to 3 and ec is 100 into 10 raised to 3 so now the 10 raised to 3 cancels you get uh, 2 sigma c so sigma s, s is equal to 2 times sigma c so stress induced in steel is 2 times the stress induced in copper so that means the load taken per unit area of cross section of steel is twice large as the load taken per unit area of copper now we will come to that uh, load sharing so the total load p is shared by both the materials so sigma s is plus sigma c is equal to p now sigma s yes, we have already obtained in terms of sigma c sigma s is two times the stress in uh, copper so two times sigma c is equal into area of steel which is thousand plus sigma c into area of copper is 750 which is equal to the load 80,000 so this is 2000 and this 750 so 2000 sigma c and 750 sigma c you get 2750 sigma c is equal to 80,000 so stress in copper is 80,000 divided by 2750 which will work out to 29.09 newton per mm square so or 29.09 megapascal that is the stress induced in copper stress in steel strip is two times the stress in copper or 2 into 29.09 which will work out to 58.18 newton per mm square or 58.18 megapascal we understood that steel is subjected to more stress and it is taking 58.18 newton per mm square of cross section and we can also find out the load shared by steel by multiplying this with the area and uh, load shared by copper will be this multiplied by area of uh, copper and that's all for today thank you for watching